Morning guys, as you can see I'm in the reflection room, look at all the stuff behind me um, and this morning I'm going to be talking about uh, a little bit to do with charging in terms of electrostatics. So in this video we're going to talk about uh, how we can actually make objects charged and how we can induce or conduct that charge from one object to another. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, friction charging. Uh, sometimes you'll hear me refer to this as triboelectric or triboelectric charging and it's basically um, rubbing two surfaces together so that one strips electrons away from the other. So whenever you have two objects, um, one of them has a greater affinity for electrons. So basically things want more electrons, they want the electrons in contact with each other um, more so than something else. So over here um, we I have some examples. So for example, wool and plastic. So on this table that we can see here, we find where wool is and we can see it's up the top here and it's on the positive end, it's up the positive end here. So what that tells me is that if I rub wool and plastic together, because plastic's down here, all of these poly 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 things these are all different types of plastics if i rub wool and plastic together the wool is going to become positively charged and the plastic will become negatively charged so if you rub a um a piece of i don't know glad wrap or something um against something fabric -y, so or a piece of plastic through your hair or something like that you'll actually have um the plastic picks up so it strips electrons away from your hair or in this case wool. So that means that the wool becomes positively charged, the plastic will become negatively charged and that's how you can pick up bits of paper with a um, plastic rod uh, or a rubber balloon through your hair. Your hair will go positive, the balloon will become negative because all of the natural rubber epoxy type plasticky things, rubbery things are down here. Um, another example is aluminium and rubber. Um, so this is the example of the Van de Graaff generator. So we have an aluminium uh, plate or I guess um, at the top and the rubber band from the Van de Graaff is in close contact with it, kind of touching but not really rubbing on it otherwise would tear a hole in it. You can see the aluminium is here in the positive end and again the natural rubber rubber band is down the negative end. So it means that when we have these two things rubbing against each other and we use a motor because it just makes it heaps easier, the aluminium dome of the Van de Graaff becomes positively charged because it uh, gives electrons to the rubber band. <coughs> um, this uh, charging of the wall and the aluminium positively means that they will want to steal electrons from the air nearby if they can, um, and generally that's how they'll end up discharging themselves. So if you get a balloon and rub it through your hair, your hair kind of stands on it a little bit, but it doesn't stay there forever. Um, Next thing I want to talk about is charging by conduction. So let's say we've got an object that we've made positively charged, like the dome of the Van de Graaff, and what we're going to do is bring it in contact with a conductor. So a conductor is something that allows the free flow of charge through or along its surface. Um, so let's say we have uh, something like this. Uh, hang on, I'll scroll to about here-ish. There we go. <coughs> so this spherical object here is positively charged and if I bring it in contact with another conductor I'm using earth so this line with the three lines here and the spike looking thing this is the symbol for earth um, if I bring this in contact sorry about that someone decided to visit um, this symbol here is earth so earth is uh, in this case it can be any conductor so if we would consider this a person you would be considered earthing um, or a conductor so we have a positive dome here this positive dome doesn't have enough electrons so it's going to strip electrons or try and grab electrons from somewhere else what that means is that the earth um, let's say is a another metal ball or a spike or something like that um, is going to give some of its electrons to here and they're kind of going to share these the total positive charge so there's one two three four five bits of positive charge here this surface and whatever you brought in contact with it will still have five bits of positive charge together but they'll have two or three each um, would have been better if i used six because then they could have had three each uh, similarly if we have a negatively charged object it will push negative charge out of it so in this case here we've got a charged spherical object again and it's pushing excess electrons down into earth or into the other conductor um, it needs to be noted that both objects 
when you're using charging by conduction end up with the same charge. They just kind of share whatever the original excess charge was. The other version is charging by induction. So here what we're doing is um, inducing charges to move. There's actually no physical contact made between the two surfaces though. So in um, this example we're going to have a positively charged object here and something where the charges can actually move. So remember the first video we're talking about electrostatic forces? <clears throat> These forces will actually try and drag the electrons that they can towards the positive charge. So positively charged here, negatively charged here. What that means is that the other end of this conductor, this whatever I've drawn here, it, um, it still has an energy charge but it doesn't have enough of it so it's overall positive. So you can see that one end, um, the positively charged thing here, is making this end become negatively charged. So what we're actually doing is, um, I guess, forcing, inducing, pushing. So we're not actually um, touching anything to move it. What we're doing is uh, forcing from a distance. So that, I guess that's how forces work. Um, in this one down here, we've got a negatively charged thing and it's repelling the negative charges away from it to the other end of the conductor, whatever that is. Um, <clears throat> and one of the cool things we'll do is actually um, connect so the first scenario again, we've got the positive charge, it drags all the negative stuff down towards it here, it leaves this end here positive. If we connect this to a conductor or earth, it'll actually drag electrons out of the earth or out of the conductor to even out what's going on here. If I then separate this, I'll see if I can make this work, if I then split that, while all of these electrons have, oops, so the electrons have jumped into here, so now we've got stuff, and then I break that, what I'm actually doing is locking those electrons in here. They can't get back out because they're not connected to Earth, which means that this thing here is positive. It hasn't lost any charge because it hasn't touched anything. And this thing here is now negatively charged because it grabs some electrons out of the Earth. Same can be said um, by having something negatively charged, pushing the electrons into the Earth. And if I again break that there, now um, this object is left positively charged. Um, so hopefully you've picked up if we conduct a charge from one place to another, we make the two objects the same. If we induce the charges to move from one place to another, we actually charge the things, and there we go, we actually charge the things opposite to what our original object was. So if we use the Van de Graaff, which is positive, we can charge a thing negative, even though we've got no negative charge. Um, we're just kind of dragging it out of the earth. Uh, hopefully this makes a little bit more sense and you can refer back to this one um, as many times as you like.